Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I love saving time by covering two topics in one video and uh, this is my most fun way this month as the month wraps up to get event quest completion points because I just used my rank 3 7 star domino with the OG domino lucky holy trinity of Masakre and Red Hulk along with the restoration kit synergy of Nick Fury and Deadpool X-Force to parry heavy my way through Spider-Punk and the rest. 12 seconds. That's how long the fight took for this boss fight. Six hits, 12 seconds. 42,701, the biggest hit. 128,199 in incinerate damage. She is the most relaxing, fun cheat code there is for me. And that is, uh, is a fun way to do it. The second time I've done this this morning, you get 18,000 points per completion of the final chapter of Thronebreaker. And now I'm at 36,000 points. And I can most notably get all the rest of the milestones. Also kind of convenient and uh, I don't believe in coincidences. But if you did, mutant combat's going on while I'm using that 7-star domino. Not too shabby either. But for the moment, we are going to take the rest of this video in a different direction and that is to discuss everybody's hopeful goal to save money on the Omega Days event and that most likely is going to include for people who care enough the best way to maximize arena points now you can see that I waited to record this video until I had earned all of the free units of all three arenas in the first 24 hours, really less than 24 hours, time recording this, that these were out. I believe that there's a lot I could speak on that I don't because I don't have the credibility or the knowledge to not embarrass myself on YouTube. But fast ways to earn free units in the arena, now that is my bread and butter. And I wanted to show you that in the last 24 hours, I also got a bonus 100 and. 21,000 battle chips that I am now going to uh, cash in and show you my stash. I've got 74,845 units. That is the most units I've ever had at this point in the game. Easily. But it gets way crazier when you consider I also have the most arena crystals I've ever had saved up in my stash. I'm like a, a man that's preparing for the unit apocalypse in a bunker. And that bunker is my arena crystal stash. Which I usually try to keep 5,000, which is crazy. That's so many units worth of battle chips. But now I've gone from 5,000, because I haven't opened them in months, to 7,270. And after I get, uh, add on another uh, 60, I'm going to be at over 7,300 of these. And statistically speaking, people always ask me, Prof, what do you expect from this? Well... A great opening, though it feels like the, the units have been somewhat nerfed for a while, is for every 250 of these, or every 500,000 worth of battle chips, you would get 1,000 units. So every 1,000 of these, you should get 4,000 units, which means in theory I should have about 28,000, almost 29,000 units in these crystals. Now I doubt that'll happen. I, I think it's probably going to be closer to 25,000 than 29,000. But just imagine, you know, you've got a bonus 20. 5,000 plus units in reserve in the form of crystals that Kabam can't take away from you because these things never expire. That is what gives me calm when my channel's making 30 cents and I'm uh, feeling like a true has-been <laughs> as I continue to work on this new book that I'm working with the author on and today I'm meeting with a book publisher and starting the next phase of my journey having used my YouTube success, as my Do Not Disturb goes off, uh, having used my YouTube success to not only secure my first ever tremendous promotion in academia, which is normally reserved for people who leave the university, get their experience, and come back. I was able to get my YouTube experience while teaching at the same time, which is, quite frankly, unheard of. Uh, so every time somebody supported this channel, that went to supporting my future career in creating a social media degree that helps students major in being influencers. And I've got a bunch of playbook skills that take my limited skills and make them way better to people who are much more talented than I am on social media. And we have had several of my students from my YouTube degree 
get jobs and internships in social media influencing just based off of my one to two classes they take because it's all project based and gets them the reps to find their voice and edit videos and practice their craft. So very honored about that. Um, as far as my mastery setup, if you want one and you just don't want recoil, I'm going to show you this first. This is the best mastery that I have on loadout two without recoil, liquid courage, or double edge. I've got four out of five in assassin. I go back and forth whether or not to put to, to put this at two out of five and deep wounds at four out of five. That's like the one thing I go back and forth, but everything else on this I swear by. And this is a very similar setup to what I use in the arena. I'll show you here in a second. The defense stays the same. I'm looking to just do what I can to max out willpower. Kabam actually recommended coagulate. I would not in their arena uh, setup suggestion, which is why I'm doing this video. And then I just max out proficiencies. Way more proficiencies is what gets the ultimate boost from the points that I save in the offensive tree. Because I go from 28 in loadout 2 to 32 in loadout 1. You'll see I still have the 2 out of 5 in assassin. and everything else is 1. And then it is defense that stays the same, but proficiencies go down big time. From uh, petrify and pacify maxed out to just stupefy and parry maxed out. But the result of the PI of my champions is stupid crazy and has helped me not trigger more death uh, matches, especially when you consider uh, how easy it is to do that with seven stars as defenders in both the seven uh, six star, excuse me, basic and six star featured Arena, we do not have seven-star readers yet because I think, quite frankly, Kabam is worried what that would do to the economy of the game. Take a shot. Um, I am loving this setup. And for everything that's not raids in the arena, it works great. And so I, I use it for all Alliance Quest weeks that aren't raids. I use it for all arena. I use it for all event quests, side quests. Even um, when there's a heal block. I'll still use it, and usually I'll still melt the defenders before I lose all my health. Now, when there's the rare event quest uh, chapter with skill champs that turns off the heal block or turns on the heal block, Aegon usually saves me after a while because, of course, I would not recommend that anybody do Necropolis completion and continue to not recommend until you have at least a rank four Aegon, but ideally rank five. And of course, I waited until mine was rank six, and that probably saved me a hundred revives. Just being blunt. So, this mastery setup, the best mastery setup for Omega Days units. I truly believe in this. I've tested literally hundreds, and this is my favorite. Offense 32, defense 18, proficiencies 10. You can copy it. Feel free to call it the Prof Off setup. I don't know if anyone else has ever run this specific one, but this is mine. I swear by it, and for what it's worth, it gets me a ton of free units every week that I don't have to worry about spending cash on Omega Days coming up very soon.